Hi, my name is Roger Coupel. I'm a regional economist in the Ag and Applied Economics Department. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to my session on the economic outlook of Wyoming. I'd like to talk a bit about economic trends and outlook for the state in general. I will focus on two issues that both have economic development implications. The state has been hit with a perfect storm of two major economic impacts. Energy transition market adjustments again about, began about six years ago and is now having a large impact on our tax system and our economic base, and now the coronavirus. We're still in the throes of the pandemic and we're hoping various vaccines now being distributed to members of the public will stop or slow the growth of the disease. However, it is important to keep in mind that though we have, we really do not know that we, that we, that we do have the, uh, these vaccines, we really don't know how the, do not know how this disease will progress with vaccines and we may be looking at a false summit on infections. So it is important to, it is important to remain flexible and follow the CDC guidelines. The outline of this talk will be as follows. First of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about how one might think about local economic resilience and the reality of energy market transitions, these structural changes, and secondly, how it might re relate to COVID-19. I'll, I'll uh, then go into some of the data, the general trends and changes that are in the uh, uh, in, in the economy. I'll focus down into energy energy transitions and market changes. And other parts, and then go into some of the other parts, of the low, important but other parts of the economy, and then then finish up with uh, implications for economic development. So, economic resilience, resilience and development. First, some basics on resilience. When we look at the change and recovery in regions, recovery can vary considerably. For example, we hear a lot about snapping back when the problem is over. We look forward and then assume that the change is temporary and we will be back to the old normal. The problem is that recovery rates are rural in rural areas are more complicated. The first panel is called the plucking model, first constructed by Milton Friedman in describing cyclical national recessions. When a disruption happens, employment drops, but then comes back to the long-term growth rate. That's that long, longer line. He designed this comment for the national recession debates that were occurring in the 1980s and 90s. However, Martin pointed out that there are other ways regions can act. They're not quite as resilient as the national recessions. Um, in the middle panel, there are two possibilities. A snapping back to a previous long-term growth rate, but at permanently slower starting level. This is a common occurrence for strong rural areas. They may grow at a national rate, but, low, but start at a lower level when there's, when there's a disruption. Uh, this is... Uh, this is especially common for strong export-based economies such as energy and tourism. Um, what happens to the national economy then takes a little while, time, a little while before you actually can, can get back to where you're going. Um, but B could also happen, and is a characterization of long-term decline. It is symptomatic of fewer counties, but they do exist. The right panel is an indication of rural reformation where regions develop other resources that make living quality as good or better. The first question here is which Wyoming counties look like which cases in, these, in this panel? And also secondly, what does it take to get counties to stave off B or C and maybe even get an A or B and maybe even get to C? Getting to rural reformation is not an easy, is an easy task and requires a lot of work in, in communities and, and a lot of reflecting on what what those strengths are so so this outlook can't really get to that get to those there's no simple way to get there so for uh, some little um, um, basics on what's been happening okay well as you look at look at these at these uh, at, at the graphs on the uh, on the left okay uh, you can really see um, uh, what's what's happening? What is happening in, in 2020 as to and or the, or the past few years uh, with respect to COVID-19? We're going along, uh, as is often the case uh, with uh, even with with uh, uh, the uh, energy transition issue. We were uh, a little bit of a spike there in 2015 and 2016, but for the most part, um, we were following the 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 role the uh, trend that was occurring in the national economy, which is exactly what that that second uh, panel was showing. But then, of course, COVID hit. Wyoming's housing prices 
uh, our personal income actually increased in, uh, from 2020, Q, first and second quarter, by 28% at an annualized rate. Uh, but a lot of that has to do with, uh, um, uh, according to uh, the uh, um, Economic Analysis Division, but a lot of that has to do with, do with, with changes that already had been set in motion. Okay, uh, well, I mean, housing prices appreciation and saw an actual an annual growth rate of 4.6 percent, higher than the U.S. of 4 percent. We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later. But uh, the Cheyenne and and uh, Casper MSAs both saw strong growth. Uh, statewide single family units were increased, uh, permitted or units permitted increased, but year to date through the end of August 20 by uh, August 2020 by 47 compared to the 2019. Um, multifamily units increased year year to date through the end of August uh, by 99 in one year. So housing was a big it was was driving a lot of what was going on here. But we but it's important to keep in mind there were a lot of people un, unemployed. I think the the U.S. was six point six percent, and um, or we were we were six point six percent. The U.S. U.S. was eight percent. Okay, but but the point is that in terms of unemployment, the point is that there are a lot of people hurting, you know, despite the fact that some of these some of these uh, uh, core indicators seem to suggest that we were we we seem to be doing okay. Our energy energy sector is still in the doldrums and likely will remain for a while. The Energy Department's annual energy outlook of 2019-2020 provides some illustrations for that. On the left panel is their forecast. As expected, coal will likely continue to decline through the future with coal-fired power closing, uh, power plants closing both in-state and in areas we export coal to. Dry natural gas will continue to increase in importance. Two reasons for this are first, the overall supply continues to grow due to technological change, directional drilling, hydraulic fracturing, relative to, to demand. So supply is increasing faster than, than demand in, that, in this case. And second, the byproduct problem. Much of the gas being produced is produced in production of oil and natural gas liquids. Now oils for um, uh, for, for obvious things like gasoline and other kinds of uh, refined products, but we forget that natural gas liquids are, is, are, are a, uh, a valuable product too. Uh, the, that's ethane, pentane, butane, those kinds of things. Um, uh, and a lot of them are used for PVC piping, for especially with diesel, so your diesel uh, 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 pickup truck uh, is going to be using with natural gas liquids uh, to help uh, as a feedstock. Um, but as they're producing methane or producing oil or producing or producing the, the wet gas that includes those, those much that um, they have to find a way to dispose of the gas and it is better to get some little revenue rather than flaring it sometimes they can they can keep keep putting it into the pipeline any way they can they can su store it in subsurface reservoirs if, if, if they have the possibility but the fact of the matter is that there's just a lot of gas out there and gas is the primary uh, competition to uh, to coal. Um, uh, estimates uh, by a Bloomberg analysis, analysis speculate that even break-even prices of gas could be low as a negative four dollars per thousand cubic feet. Okay. Um, uh, uh, in other words, they're going to pay somebody to take it, and and uh, and that's not so much here in Wyoming, but it certainly is in places like the Permian Basin and some of the big shale plays uh, in the south and and in in the, in the east, as well as the uh, the uh, the huge amount of gas that comes from from uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Well, adding to that is the second panel to the right, a, a, a series of studies that. Uh, Lazard has done, uh, LLC has done, and company has done for about 15 years. And, um, um, and what he uses is the levelized cost of, of, uh, um, of, of, uh, of different types of energies to see, to see what, what it is, uh, to see what, what, where the break-even price is and how they compare. A levelized cost is basically you take the, the cost of producing of developing the, the li over the life of the uh, of the 
of the field or the life of the operation or plant, uh, you then you divide by uh, you divide that cost into the amount of electricity you've kind of created, okay, and uh, uh, and then you uh, uh, and that that is a planning. It's an average cost, but it's it's uh, it's still a, a, a an important um, planning number that one has to consider. Um, it's 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 an level it's an average over the life of the plant. The company has has been producing these estimates for for a number for the DOE for a number of years. And uh, uh, so one of the things you can see though is that red line. What's on the right of the red line versus what's on the left of the red line, and where coal and where uh, natural gas and and <coughs> utility scale um, um, uh, renewables are. And unfortunately for coal. Gas, which is the primary competitor to uh, coal, is for the most part low, a less costly alternative than, than coal. But so are renewables. Now, you, uh, uh, distributed new renewables, the, the two top, are, are still um, more expensive for the most part than, than coal, since especially coal, our coal, is, is quite cheap. So that's that's good, but but that's not what's killing killing the uh, the market for coal. What's killing the market for coal really is the natural gas, the bottom, at the very bottom. So so um, uh, and as if you looked at previous uh, Lazard studies that go back to the two thousands, that those numbers have changed considerably. Though. So coal distributed uh, renewables have pretty much stayed where they are, uh, while natural gas has moved. Uh, to the left, as has those utility scale renewables, and so uh, that that technological change is huge here. Okay, uh, we've uh, moved into those regulatory uh, the, the these this situation because of market oriented policies that that were started under the Reagan administration and then and then initiated. Uh, there was a uh, a bit of a time lag there, but they were they were initiated in the mid in the mid nineties under under Clinton. So if you look at uh, net monthly national gas spot prices over the period from two January two oh two to January twenty, you can kind of see you know a, a, a two things. First of all, there's a general slight decline. This is us here. Um, Opal compared to the Henry Hub, which is the main, the primary large terminal uh, exchange terminal in, in Louisiana that brings in gas from all over the all over the United States and the Gulf of Mexico. Um, there's two things. First of all, there's a general decline in prices, which goes with the fact that that supply is increasing faster than demand. So uh, at this point, um, uh, the uh, uh, the second thing is that it's quite variable. So one of the things about gas is that it is quite. Now, one thing it's important and, and kind of related to that though is that if you look at the variation from about January uh, 2012 or 2009 uh, on, that variation has dropped. And that variation has dropped in part due to the fact that one thing they've got a better sense of how to get gas out when they need to get gas and put it in the pipeline for gas gener electricity generators, but secondly, um, uh, they've been able to uh, to regularize the uh, distribution of gas across more places because pipeline capacity has increased. Okay, and so therefore, if for example. Uh, the Midwest doesn't need as much gas. Maybe California, the Pacific Coast needs needs it more, or vice versa. You know, or maybe they can get gas from here to uh, 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 through uh, uh, to uh, the uh, farther f to back east into the central uh, upper upper Midwest areas quicker. Now we, we we've been working on that. We have a very integrated, much more integrated uh, pipeline system than we had before. But if you look at the next slide, okay, is where Wyoming is uh, is hurting. So we see natural gas contributions are highest since uh, since uh, 2004, but it, but they've declined due to price reductions. That's a supply response. Coal also has declined in terms of its mineral seven contribution to, to our mineral seven seven taxes, but that was a, that's become a demand response. It's a different kind of thing. So it's important to keep that that uh, 
that discuss that that mind that there could be we could have price changes because of supply responses or price price changes because of demand responses. Finally, what we have to co consider is uh, going to the future, regardless of what happens, is the regulatory environmental legacy issues. Okay, shifting to new technology does, does not mean that older systems, the human capital connected to it. Or the facility remnants change or disappear without efforts and costs. Uh, cleanup and re remediation are form form formulaically tied to a healthy industry. So when the industry goes down, okay, and the markets decline, reclamation slows down. Um, when the price goes down, so, do, so does uh, so does reclamation become it take, it takes a back seat. Uh, we have a lot that we've actually doing that's that's actually from my perspective looking at across other other states that uh, reclamation uh, that that put us a little ahead of a lot of other states we do actual reclamation plans Cal Colorado has that as does does uh, Montana but oddly enough well California does not um, uh, uh, the re uh, there's also interim reclamation here requirements that's kind of subject to BLM district district requirements and state conservation oil and gas conservation commission type commissions, but but Wyoming is one that's been that was started experimenting with that regulatory change. But we still have well over four or five thousand orphan wells and and in Wyoming uh, and. Uh, about 2,700 of those wells are on private and state land and still in need of, re of, of remediation. On the coal side, the, the mine reclamation, the Surface Mine Reclamation Control Act creates a partnership with the states to manage that reclamation. Uh, but unfortunately, we're going, no matter how you how you uh, work it, unless it's interim reclamation, uh, it it seems to be a, a an, an afterthought. Uh, uh, this is our Office of Service Mine Reclamation Enforcement data that is that. And during the boom, the green line is cumulative damaged land from production process. That's what mines do. There's nothing wrong with that. That's how we get our coal or whatever, or minerals out. Okay. But, that, but the dashed line below it nets out reclaimed land. So it's still growing. So the, the net amount of, of uh, mine, of and land needing reclamation is still going up in the middle of the boom. So even the boom, when the companies have the funds, the need for reclamation increases. Post reclamation or post boom, reclamation still uh, uh, still is needed, but exists. But the funding, but the funding sources are questionable. Now, our our. Uh, uh, mining industry, uh, mining companies that in the Powder Basin do a good job. There are some of the national, international experts uh, of, of the uh, 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 pri uh, the, the, that are that are biologists that work for oil and gas, some of the oil and gas companies and the mining companies that know how to how to how to uh, um, to reclaim. Their uh, their human capital is, is huge, but. Ultimately, you need you need money to uh, to reclaim, and and that's where uh, it becomes riskier to actually get it. So. Um, likewise, the abandoned mineland fund over fifty thousand sites in the United States used, uh, and it's used to clean up environmental damages by by mostly coal, but it kind of goes into uh, some a, a lot of other energy sectors. Um, Abandoned mine land uh, fund tied to coal production, but um, but we've seen it. I was working on a project, been working on a project uh, through the College of Ag and through uh, our reclamation center on a legacy issue with a uranium mine, but they don't pay into it. Uh, that that money that comes into a uh, sh into the AML is thirty one cents per short ton of coal. Uh, that's an important issue, and, and there's been discussions about trying to widen that to other energy sectors, but um, but so far they haven't been success been particularly successful. Um, uh, in in 2021, the legislation for continuing AML funding comes uh, comes due in Congress, and so hopefully uh, our uh, um, warring parties will uh, will uh, figure out a way to work work on that to uh, to work together so they won't uh, 
uh, so we can actually get that uh, re reauthorized. And maybe one of the few things that warring parties might, may agree with. So what are the economic opportunities? Okay, well, we're already working on at the, here at the university on, on different aspects of this, and I think it's really important. Uh, advanced products made from coal, um, uh, activated carbon is the primary, uh, pri primary one, but the primary ca activated carbon for manufacturing and engineering, but also manufactured carbon as a soil amendment, uh, low level, I suspect, you might call low level activated, activated carbon. Coal char is a less expensive alternative, bi alternative to biochar, which is being used. Um, so, but other ones include uh, rare, earth, rare earth elements, coal to chemical feedstocks, and other. And so, uh, the College of Ag is part of that, uh, that group, and the Reclamation Center in particular is part of that. We're also looking at different ways to reclaim in terms of how you reclaim a sagebrush step. Uh, there's the costs and, and risks involved, but also how you create the, topo the topological approaches that, that might may provide more, more of a, uh, a uh, uh, more security in, in terms of, of how of whether or not those vegetative communities will, will return. Well, these are all concepts and tools that that can be exported to other states and other areas nationally and, and internationally. So I won't go too much in the coronavirus because, like I said, you know the Wy the Wyoming Health Health Department of Health dashboard is something everybody can see, but. Uh, you start looking at, at how how we uh, um, uh, how we how we've looked at how we've as, as a country dealt with the issue of coronavirus and how it's got nationally as even in this state has gone up considerably. And I remember discussions back in April, people saying, "Well, you know, uh, we're rural and we're not going to get it. It's an urban thing." Well, apparently it isn't, and so it's always going to be a bit of a hobble. On, on our ability to, uh, to uh, recover quickly from the coronavirus. Um, and, uh, and we're at a, in, a, in a, 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 an important uh, turning point here as to whether or not we're going to have more spikes, more phases. We've talked about two phases, but there could be more than that. So, so I think we need to be careful and we need to figure out ways to, uh, to contract, contact trace and to uh, manage economies in a way that that reduces the likelihood of getting get, getting it but it's, it's always going to be there well let's find out what's going on with the rest of the economy from the home prices from the second quarter 2019 to second quarter 2020 about a 4.6 percent growth but if you look at it a longer way a longer level uh, from um, uh, 2010 to 2020, it's a lot less. And what's what we found is that uh, that every state in the Pacific Northwest, from uh, all the way to Wy to Wyoming, which we're not in the Pacific Northwest, but but uh, and it goes all the way down to uh, uh, New Mexico and Colorado, have had uh, booms in the real estate markets. That inc actually includes Western provinces of Canada as well. There was a, an outlook uh, uh, or a, a um, conference in the in the uh, summer that, that that I was part of. Okay. So, in some respects, now oddly enough, there, there the argument was in some of the interviews and, and surveys suggest they're coming out here because they get away from the coronavirus. But then you kind of look at that and say, okay, well, yeah, we've got to. Uh, an increase in coronavirus ourselves, this is, which is pretty serious. So they may be uh, making the wrong decisions. But what's important to consider is that is they are whether they're making the wrong decision or based on uh, based on 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 a uh, on a myth. The fact of the matter is that is they're buying up, and we're seeing that right now. That's good for the real estate market and and uh, good for. Uh, um, our tax revenues, but it but it is a uh, uh, it is does mean that new people are moving in moving into uh, um, uh, into the state, and sometimes that can be disruptive. 
I've tried to avoid in the beginning talking about uh, the recreation of tourism, primarily because uh, it's a um, it's a uh, um, it's a lot of times seen as a com competition with uh, with energy, and it really isn't. I mean, we need both, and and it's an important part of the diversification issue. But um, what I've done here is some work I was doing uh, when somebody asked me to do on on the COVID impacts on the national park. This is back uh, in in the in the in, the, uh, in July when we we're doing this, and so what I'm I'm using here is a uh, is Yellowstone and Grand Teton as sort of bellwethers for for what might what what COVID is being do, is ha, is uh, doing to those visit those visits. A lot of those communities in Pacific North or in the uh, northwest part of the state, as well as north as well as this part of the state, the um, here here in, in Laramie are dependent on. And partially, somewhat dependent anyway, on the uh, on uh, the uh, the the tourists coming, tourist dollars, whether they're in the winter or in the summer, uh, we need that. Uh, it's not as big as on the tax revenue for tax revenues as energy, but it is big for employment and uh, and, and 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 their tax contribution is not insignificant. It's pretty important. So what do we see? Well, for the most part, it's been going up. You know, uh, that's you know, it's kind of ups and ups and downs uh, since 1990, and it'll continue to go up. Uh, but tourism hit the Yellowstone and Grand Teton pretty heavily. Yellowstone June June 2020 compared to Yellowstone June June 19 a 32 percent drop. Grand Teton a 25 percent drop. Comparison with the Great Recession, the, though, and this is an interesting was that. It increased by five percent um, from June before to before the crash, um, uh, and so we had a we had we had a, this this great recession, and they actually increased the number of uh, of people going to to the to the park. Um, there's less visitation sensitivity and less data in the national forest, but the expectation is lower is is lower lower or less with with high density pulsing occurring. Uh, now, if anybody's been in the uh, Medicine Bow National Forest, there's been a huge numbers of people from outside the state coming in and uh, and uh, uh, recreating, and so it's it's it, 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 even even the even the forests have, have felt that too. Um, the second one here is a little more detail, and this is kind of to me is kind of interesting. Um, uh, the uh, uh, yeah, there. So if you look at uh, changes in visitor hours versus changes in in uh, in visitors, as the uh, previous slide suggested, there was a negative, substantially substantial negative re re or uh, uh, change in in both in both those um, uh, those um, um, uh, both the, the, those metrics. Um, what's interesting too is that uh, if you actually look at pub from the pub monthly public use report, they spent less hours in the park in 2020 than they did in in uh, in 2019. Um, now we don't know, you know, one year does not make a uh, uh, a trend, but but if they're spending less hours, they're spending less money on. Uh, and so they're spending, there's less sales taxes coming in. We don't really know how, what the sales tax implications are yet on that, but, but uh, a lot of us are kind of wondering about that right now. There's also fewer overnight stays. Um, concessionaire lodging dropped from, uh, uh, dropped by, by, to about a tenth, while camping, uh, total overnight stays dropped by, dropped down to, to by, uh, was about 26 percent. So you're looking at some pretty amazing uh, number number of changes, and that translates to less spending as a result of that. Um, so in conclusion, okay, uh, I, I think that 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 uh, transition uh, that transition in energy and energy markets. 
is, is, is a negative, but we have to think in terms of how we can make it positive. Um, those Martin's discussions uh, in his book, in his article, basically said something like he wasn't wasn't looking at our us or looking at energy. He was looking at, at overall manufacturing or or different types of ch trends going on in England. But but uh, the point is that that uh, we have to work hard to make sure it isn't a decline in a region, and figure out ways. And we have to look work hard to to figure out how to get to a rural reformation. It may be a small one, or it may not be a big one, but it may. But any kind of growth uh, and leveraging re assets is, is is the next stage. That, and uh, as uh, people have said, politicians have said, never waste a good good recession. Uh, the, the Germans did this during the 50s and 60s and 70s. Every time there was a recession, they retrained people. And so we need to start thinking about that. Wage and salary income may recover or snap back. I don't know. Is that a snap back or it may recover at a lower level? Okay. Uh, reclamation is a possible industry cluster, cluster but one that needs find, to find funding to support industries to implement that because the companies that are on the, on the hook to do it are, are generally speaking, having a hard time uh, uh, maintaining being, being viable. Uh, there needs to be a national need to discuss the AML. We can't really uh, afford not to. Uh, and then the, the real estate growth and, and tourism growth is a is, will continue regardless of whether or not of what we do uh, with with uh, uh, the other sectors in our, in our in our economy. Anyway, thank you very much. I've uh, in in this email I have a or in this uh, PowerPoint I do have my references and so you, uh, and so if you're but if you're interested let me know and I can I can I can uh, show uh, send that to you separately. Thanks and goodbye.